Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining us again. Let's wait for a few more people to join. So this week we're going to be talking to Emma Bunnin. Um, so Emma is a celebrity agent and publicist um, and she runs On The Box Talent and she's just joined. So let me add her now. So we're going to be talking about all things celebrities today. So really excited to have Emma. Hello. Hello. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. Are you okay? I'm all right. I'm like propped up on a million cushions because I'm really short. Oh, <laughs> so you. Hopefully you I'm can just, see me all right. <laughs> yeah, I'm just in one of our meeting rooms in the office. So I'm trying to get kind of a flattering angle. <laughs> yeah. If anyone sees anyone walking behind me, just ignore them <laughs> luckily i'm locked i'm locked in the house on my own so no one can disturb me today <laughs> oh bless you um so we've got quite a few viewers on so to start off with do you want to tell everyone kind of a bit about yourself how you kind of became to be a celebrity agent as you are today yeah i mean it was a an unusual path and not something i ever set out to be basically yeah. i went to university to study tv and radio yeah. i wanted to work in production yeah ended up getting a job straight out of uni at the BBC was there for gosh seven odd years and then I went freelance and worked on loads of various programs I did the one show this morning oh wow. yeah Darren Brown documentaries yeah uh, children's BBC <laughs> and then TOWIE um yeah. and then I left TV um because why did I leave? I don't know. I was in my 30s. And yeah. I the, the long hours, the sort of 14 hour days were getting to me. Oh <laughs> I thought yeah. I need to do something where my skills are quite transferable. Yeah. But that still gives me a buzz. And I ended up going into PR actually. Oh, okay. Initially. Yeah. And I worked in travel PR for yeah. tourism Australia. So I used to travel to Australia, which was amazing. Right. I was promoting Australia as a destination for the British market. Yeah. Um, then I wanted to buy a house and I couldn't earn enough money in travel PR so I went into finance PR oh, I God. literally don't right. know how I got that job I have yeah. no idea how I got the job <laughs> but I did and then I was able to save enough money to buy my house in London which yeah. I was very very fortunate to do mm. and then I ended up moving and to working at Premier Models who are a big modeling yeah. agency in yeah. London and I was their head of um, press so was a fab job but I realized that actually I quite enjoyed working for my maybe would work for myself because I've been freelance for years in tv and I yeah. was missing that so I went on to be a freelance PR and started looking after celebrities who then asked me can you manage me yeah and that's kind of how it happened and then before I knew it I had a number of clients and so I set up the business uh, which was on the box PR yeah but as it's evolved i'm doing like less pr and more management so i ended up changing the name recently to on the box talent yeah a very long-winded way of telling you <laughs> but it sounds like a great career you've kind of like dabbled in all sorts haven't you so a little bit of this a little bit of that <laughs> yeah and you've probably picked up so many contacts on the way from like tv producing you know with your celebrities you can kind of get them in that way as well so yeah so what would you say is kind of a typical day or kind of a week if you're like super busy in, you know, as a talent manager, what would you kind of, what do you get up to? It massively varies. Um, I guess it, there's a there's a fair bit of proactive and reactive work. So I'm doing a lot of pitching clients to TV shows yeah. um, that, are, that I know are casting, coming up, looking for talent. I do a lot of... Um, pitching for press opportunities for talent where where they're relevant um, and then you get a lot of reactive so if something's happening with one of your clients then you'll get all the media outlets coming to you asking yeah. for the story asking for a line so you're managing that um, on top of that I'm pitching my clients to brands to do brand collaborations paid brand collaborations um, as well as receiving emails from those brands asking me what my clients charge to do an Instagram post or an advertising campaign so I'm negotiating fees for them, negotiating contracts. Then yeah. you are making sure you deliver that job for the client, invoicing, yeah. chasing invoices, <laughs> paying your clients. 
Um, that's like a very then, busy week. <laughs> yeah, it, and it's really varied every day. And then on top yeah. of that, you have a lot of charity work. So a lot of my clients will be aligned with uh, one or two charities that they particularly yeah. resonate with. So we're managing charity requests, gifting requests, events. I mean, it's endless. And then on top of that, you also have a lot to deal with your clients who, you know, come to you for support, or yeah. advice, um, you know, where, what they should do next. It's a real variety, actually. Yeah. And, and it's I just that's, going... <laughs> Yeah, that's what kind of keeps the role so fresh as well. You have kind of new brands to work with. It's not kind of the same every week, which is always exciting. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, it's brilliant. I love it. I absolutely love it. And the best decision I ever made was to go freelance and set up the business because um, I don't know how I'd work for someone else now, actually. <laughs> <laughs> it was so really difficult. You your team or do you have um kind of people feeding into you i actually do it by myself at the moment and wow. I've, just on, <laughs> I've been doing it on my own for maybe well the business is almost five years old i think yeah <laughs> and so i've been doing it completely on my own and over that time i have had um an assistant at yeah. one point and i was on the verge of getting someone else to come in and then coronavirus hit and so yeah. financially the business changed because things really we you know halted yeah. so I put that on hold but obviously I'm now having a baby I got pregnant in lockdown <laughs> brilliant timing <laughs> um so well actually I really wanted to be pregnant so it's fine um and I'm gonna have somebody who's gonna come in and take over when I go on maternity so I yeah. have uh, somebody who's a very experienced um celebrity manager who's gonna just take on my clients for a short period once I've had the baby um, yeah. but other than that it's normally just me oh, <laughs> so, busy busy yeah it's good and so how would you say so you said you know that on the box talent was kind of built four years ago how do you find celebrities have kind of shifted over those four years do you think it's more kind of influencer based now or are you still finding well, demand well there's definitely there's definitely a place and a market for both and I think there's yeah. definitely a rise in the influencers um in the influencer space yeah uh, or them them sort of moving into the celebrity space because yeah I think channels like youtube and instagram have had you know created a new brand of celebrity really so yeah. you only have to look at programs like strictly um they took on joe sugg who's the youtuber they yeah. had um what was her name saffron <laughs> barker yeah. the social media influencer you know that's the first time i think um any of these big programs have looked at a different space to take on their talent for the show which is yeah it's very telling of how popular you know these influencers are um and i think in terms of social media advertising brands are tending to go to influencers who have kudos in their space to promote yeah. their brand because they're going to believe somebody who's an interior design expert more if they're going to promote something interior wise than maybe, yeah. maybe a, a generic celebrity who does a bit of everything yeah. so i think you know there's definitely brands are turning to influencers in their field now for that yeah. kind of thing but there's still the space for celebrities i still get a lot of work for my clients who are on the more the celeb side than the influencer side so i think there's space for both really but it's definitely changed yeah, and I think also from, so to anyone who's wondering how Emma and I kind of first interacted, so spa PR work with a lot of celebrities, and so we would kind of send them to spas, so we reached out to Emma to help her with her um, kind of client list. So for us as well, for our spas, they recognise kind of that celebrity status as well, whereas with influence, they kind of depend on our feedback and who we think is good, but with celebrities, their status is kind of already known and they're more kind of res still respected even if you no know, influencers are coming up as well so yeah it's mm. interesting to see what will happen and kind of you know as the months evolve and um yeah brands seem to get back on their feet with like gifting and whatnot but well that's it I think at the moment as well because the budgets have been squeezed um, yeah, you, you can't necessarily afford to pay the big bucks for a, a high end yeah. celebrity, but but you're starting to look at micro influencers who can have a really big impact for your brand also. So yeah, yeah it's an interesting time coming out of this <laughs> period of coronavirus, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so then moving on to kind of celebrities themselves. Um, obviously, there's been a lot of like negative press about celebrities in the past, with like you know Caroline Flack and. 
what kind of would you say to client managers like yourself or anyone in similar positions how can they kind of support celebrities from like a friendly approach or like representing them in the media like positively well i think it's uh, anyone that's done or doing my job knows yeah. it's a huge part of our job is to support our clients and yeah. um you are you're more than an agent because you because you have such an an intense and close relationship with your clients that you become a sounding board and a shoulder to cry on and there for advice so you know yeah. it's, um, it's a fine line between a friendship and a and a working relationship so i think um, this is not new news, the sort of stuff that's been going on with trolling yeah. and uh, celeb bashing. So we most are fairly used to it in some respect. Yeah. Very few escape it. Um, you know, and, and I think you wouldn't get this behaviour in an office. It wouldn't be acceptable yeah. in an office environment to speak to people like that. But I think celebrities, influencers are almost expected to just take it on the chin. It's part of your job. And unfortunately, yeah. that is fairly true um but it's uh, it's a really it's a really difficult one and i think a lot of the talent that i work with are quite resilient or have had to become quite resilient yeah to manage that and you know short of telling people take a break from social media you you know that's really difficult when you're earning your living that way yeah exactly so you know i think it's about them having good support around them not being able to take it to heart and also if they're starting out in the industry to have somebody who says can say to them there will be times when people will you know well most of the time people haven't anyone has an opinion and they certainly like yeah. shoving it down your throats <laughs> yeah. um but actually we're quite lucky as a business because we represent um a psychologist a media psychologist yeah. arthur cassidy and he offered after the caroline flack situation he offered yeah. free therapy if needed on a one-to-one -one basis to any of my clients so yeah. that was offered up um whether or not they take it i i wouldn't know yeah. because they don't come through me they would go directly to him it's none of my business unless they wanted to tell me but that is something we try and offer yeah. some support but yeah. it's um, yeah it's a really it's been a really strange time hasn't it with everything mm -hmm. going on yeah and I think just having kind of that support system in place, you know, they might not need it, the support right now, but say a negative article comes out and then that will kind of spiral. It floors you. Yeah. I mean, these these things absolutely floor you and it comes out of nowhere yeah. as well. And there are situations where you might have done something 10 years ago, made yeah. a comment, posted a tweet. That can come back and bite you on the arse 10 years later. Yeah. Lose you a job, you know, can lose you a job over that. And it's really devastating for somebody if you think of your 17 year old self and the shit you'd come out with <laughs> as yeah. a teenager fast forward 10 years and you've got a blossoming career in you know the social media or on reality tv but you're accountable for something you did 10 years ago i couldn't even remember what i said last week yeah. 10 years ago and yet they're really dragged over the coals and it's it's really difficult i think it's a really it's a funny time but because you're in the public eye you're expected to toe the line behave a certain way never put a foot wrong and that's unrealistic yeah you know There's so many resources out there as well at the moment you know even with you know the black lives matter you know people were educating themselves you know daily and finding out so much more and kind of there's this expectation that celebrities know everything and they, and only... they don't and, yeah. and I think that was really uh, that was a quite a highlighting um, movement because I think a lot of people came out saying I, I hold my hands up I actually don't know enough about this so I'm going to read this article I'm going to watch this documentary I'm going to engage with my friends who can tell me more about this subject yeah. it was you know, it was a huge, wasn't it? Yeah. It still is, still is. It's going, yeah. you know, it doesn't stop. It hasn't stopped now just because no, there's exactly. things going on. It's yeah, it's continuing, still, which is yeah. really positive. And I've noticed that quite a lot of jobs as well are, are, are coming in and, you know, resonating with that movement. Work's coming through for it as well and highlighting yeah. and campaigns. So, you know, it's interesting. Yeah, and for kind of celebrities to have their not just like their face but to work with such important brands and then they can kind of share their audience as well that will obviously give them great positive pr but absolutely a, you know a worthy cause to be involved with anyway just as you know just as a human in society so yeah 
absolutely and i think that's the thing when occasionally sometimes some a celebrity might mess up or do something wrong i would always say try and like, look at the root of what this has come from and maybe yeah. do something in return that could yeah. help with that to, yeah. to sort of show you're willing or that you're learning from your mistakes so i think you know there's always something you can do to try and put a positive spin on things you know absolutely um, so then moving on to kind of your career, so what would you say is the most memorable kind of moment or like a career highlight that you would say? Well, it's so um, <laughs> really, yeah. in my TV career, I was really, really lucky because I worked in travel programmes because I yeah. used to be a travel agent when I was <laughs> 17 before I went to yeah. university. I went to university quite late. I was 22 when I studied. When I was 17, I was a travel agent. Yeah. So when I worked in TV, I ended up working on the holiday program for the BBC. <laughs> um, and I think I got that job because I had the travel background yeah. and I'd been around, you know, quite a bit with travelling. Um, and I got a job <laughs> going around the world. Um, and it was called a Gap Gap Month. It was for the BBC show. Yeah. The holiday. And we basically did what you would do in a gap year in a month. It was a crazy, ridiculous oh, wow. experiment. And yeah. we did 12 countries in 31 days. Oh, I've wow. never been more exhausted in my life. Yeah. <laughs> it was an amazing experience. Amazing yeah. and equally horrific at the same time, but yeah. such an experience. That was, a, that was amazing on the travel side. And in the PR mm -hmm. side, um, I, work, I used to work for Money Supermarket. Oh, okay. So yeah. I, used, I used to do their um, TV stuff, yeah. TV PR. And I worked on the Epic Struck campaign. So I don't know if you remember the guy in the, the shorts and the heels oh, um, no. Dave and he um yeah there was don't don't you wish your girlfriend was hot like me was the advert and yeah. he was in high heels and shorts and oh, it was a, a really divisive advert and yeah. I did the tv pr on that and we managed to get him on this morning oh, in no. the opening credits strutting down the south bank in his tiny shorts oh, <laughs> so he remembers him <laughs> Um, oh, I don't have to in that. his yeah. shorts and his heels and then Phil who was um, actually on it with Amanda Holden that day they did a yeah. sofa interview with him which I think is the first time they've done that with a TV advert character yeah. being, by being interviewed on the sofa so um, I was really proud of that yeah, <laughs> so that was my yeah my TV that. stuff so yeah that was yeah. really great really fun yeah. and then in this celebrity world I think it's just it's countless it's there's so many lovely moments but i think it's quite hard to find a standout in that <laughs> yeah but, yeah i remember the pr campaigns better <laughs> <laughs> that that one had a big impact you know it was such a huge deal at the time yeah so what's kind of next for you then obviously you mentioned you're pregnant which is super exciting thank you <laughs> and she has over the baby what's kind of not handing over the baby handing over your business yeah, I, might, I, mean, I wish I could hand the baby over, but I don't think anyone yeah, can have her. Have a business. Um, so what's kind of next? What do you have coming up? Um, so we've got, I've got a few clients who are taking part in um, a new MTV series, which is coming up. Oh, so it's a brand yeah. new series, which they've just been shooting in the last three, yeah, three or four weeks. So that's probably in the edit now and we'll go out. Um, then obviously I'm having the baby at Christmas. So I'll be off for maybe four to eight weeks and then back in back in business. As a business, I'd quite like to look into doing media training as something down the line, yeah. just because I have the, I did 12 years in TV. As yeah. a, well, I've worked my way up to producer level. So I'd quite like to use those skills to maybe help clients or brands um, with PR, uh, with media training. Yeah. So that might be something I'd look at doing with the business. Um, and I'd also, <laughs> who doesn't want to do a podcast, but I just think it'd be really uh, quite interesting if I could do an on the box podcast would be really yeah. fun. And maybe interviewing different clients of mine, talking about the industry. Yeah, definitely. I yeah. don't know how much I could say without <laughs> never working yeah. again. <laughs> but I would love to do, I'd love to do a podcast for like the business at some point. Yeah. That would be, that would be dreamy. But yeah, yeah. and I've also got some, um, potential tv ideas in the pipeline that are in development with some of my clients as well so yeah there's that's some really interesting bits and bobs i've got a yeah. client having a baby a month before me oh, <laughs> so oh. that's really exciting yeah. so she, she and her husband are gearing up for baby times as well so yeah there's loads yeah. loads going on and things change all the time we've yeah. got 
you know lots of different clients and they've all, there's always something going on <laughs> yeah oh that sounds amazing so we're just going to open the floor to any questions um while we have emma and we'll obviously save this video and upload it onto our feed um, oh, hello. <laughs> one of my clients has just joined oh <laughs> he's, he's one to watch elliot Wright. go and look at yeah. his instagram he's <laughs> He's a good one. Uh, this is like that, that awkward moment when no one's got any questions. Yeah. <laughs> and we go, um, oh, look, my phone line's gone. I've got to go. <laughs> Maybe you've covered any, everything then. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing more of interest to say. Oh, hi, Zoe. Well, <laughs> oh, there's Elliot. Uh, well, if anyone does have any questions, um, then they can just... Of your inboxes i'm guessing will be open oh yeah absolutely yeah absolutely. Yeah. and they can just comment on the video but yeah anytime anytime yeah, yeah. That'd be great love yeah, it also, oh also, thanks sophie great <laughs> well you've fine. done such a great job emma no one's got any <laughs> <laughs> let's go with that yeah but, let's yeah. Go. but thank you so much for joining us you it's are been so really welcome interesting actually to talk to you because we haven't had any deaths kind of in the celebrity kind of realm so yeah it's been great to hear about oh, you like, it's this podcast well let's definitely see if i can get one off the ground no you definitely can and thanks everyone for watching um so like i say this video is going to be saved on the spa pr feed um, and then i can send it to you as well if you wanted to upload it onto your channels yeah. but yeah thanks so much everyone thank you so you too bye, bye.